items store important information for keeping track of quantity on hand when they are purchased and received into inventory, and also when they are sold and shipped. To create new items or edit existing items, either click the Edit Items button on the toolbar, or from the Edit menu and the Item Maintenance submenu, choose Items. The list of your items is found in a grid that can be customized with columns of your choice. Filters can be selected to display items that meet the defined criteria and have font or background color applied to those items to more easily distinguish between various item conditions and statuses. When you want to locate an item and your list is long, rather than scrolling to the position, instead use the Find feature from either the button or the F5 key. Either type the first few characters of the item number or description into the respective field to set the position in the finder grid when pressing the F5 or down arrow key. Or instead press F6 to open a smart search function to locate the item with specified criteria. If you are creating new items that are like one that already exists, you can copy it with all information carried over except the item number or create a new item from scratch. When creating or editing items, information is displayed on several different tabs. Item numbers must be unique and can have up to 16 characters across up to four different segments, as determined by the item format you create in the company profile. One segment can be set to auto increment when creating many items in succession, provided that segment only has numbers and no other characters. Give the item a description that will be used for searching, internal display, and printing on documents. The category code sets the accounting for item sales and provides default values for pricing discount levels. The control account sets the accounting for item purchases and adjustments and determines the cost of sale value when the item is sold. Enter or choose the unit of measure for stocking the item, which you can force to a valid value with a company profile option. Make the item not active if you don't want to purchase or sell the item. If you use a Dagio Doc Store, you may attach PDFs directly to items for information display. And if you use Adagio Payments for online credit cards with Level 3 processing, the commodity code can be entered here if needed. The standard base selling price and sale price with date range are entered here. And purchasing and cost of sale values are entered here. All these amounts can be entered based on the stocking unit of measure. Or you may select a different unit for selling or purchasing as defined on the Unit tab, along with the conversion calculation from the stocking unit. This tab also contains information used for invoicing programs, such as the item taxable status, whether serial numbers are required, whether an alternate item number can be chosen to sell if this one is not available, the unit weight for goods sold or purchased, the picking sequence for warehouse storage used for printing picking slips and performing physical inventory counts, and what the item price is for items that are marked up over cost. Other information stored here is whether the item maintains stock levels at locations for receipts, the spatial dimensions for custom reporting, barcode values if those are used, and if the bill of materials add-on program is used, whether master item assemblies can be auto-assembled on demand and which bill of material would be used. The Pricing tab has the setup for alternate item prices, based on customer level or quantity sold, for use in Adagio order entry and invoices. The Vendors tab contains either one or two payables vendors from which this item is purchased, which is used for receipt entry 
and an Adagio purchase orders. Additional text about the item can be entered at the bottom in four fields, or also on the Notes tab in the Additional Comment section with unlimited text. Other notes with date and user stamps are available for tracking who and when the notes were entered. And an item alert can be active to display a message whenever someone edits this item or selects it for a transaction. The Optional Fields tab appears if item optional fields have been configured in the company profile for storing information about items not already available. The Image tab allows selecting a single graphic file, like a JPEG or a bitmap, for visual display. The last three tabs are available only if the security group assigned to the user permits access to these functions, which are also accessible from the Edit Item Maintenance menu. The Location tab lists all location codes for the company, allows editing the picking sequence at a location to be different than the default, and shows whether this item is allowed to be processed from this location. An active status means it is allowed. On demand means that the item is allowed, but a transaction has not yet been posted. An inactive means that the item is not allowed. The Reorder tab is the place to enter what desired minimum and maximum levels of stock to maintain at a given location, how much of the item should be purchased, and the expected sales for the period. You can have a single set of annual values or multiple values if purchasing and sales volumes vary throughout the year. These are used by Adagio Purchase Orders for generating new purchases. And the Sales History tab lists the quantity, sale, and cost values for the last 12 periods, as determined by when month-end processing is performed in inventory. Edits can be made if corrections are necessary. Make transaction processing efficient by keeping item information up to date. Find out more about Adagio from the product page on our website. Watch another training video on this Adagio program from the playlist. Or subscribe to the Adagio YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.